Five Nights at Freddy's is most popular for three things. Its absurd amount of content, its absurd fanbase, and its absurd amount of merchandise. With any popular franchise, FNAF is bound to have its fair share of merchandise. And a very fair share it is at that. This series' merch is infamous for many reasons, but typically the varying degrees of quality, as well as the fact that so many of them aren't even actual canonical characters, or are just hashed out recolors. But in more recent times, we've actually been getting some more high-quality items. I was so impressed with the quality of some recent merchandise that I had gotten that I was inspired to make this video. So here we go. Today we'll be discussing 8 FNAF merch distributors, as well as a few miscellaneous products discovering some of the best and worst FNAF merch on the market. We'll be using this helpful scale to rank these companies from worst to best. With no further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with the most popular, as well as the most infamous, we have Funko. This is, to no one's surprise, the longest section of this video. Funko is a real big name in the pop culture scene. From their action figures to their most popular Funko Pop figurines, Funko makes merchandise for some of the most popular franchises in the world, such as Pokemon, Marvel, DC, Disney, Star Wars, cereal brands, fucking Kiko Men soy sauce. Whatever you can think of, there's a good chance Funko has at least one item for it. When Funko first acquired the FNAF license, it was still relatively small in terms of the real world. Obviously, it was everywhere online, but there really wasn't actually any signs of FNAF out in the wild. People were ecstatic. Funko was a massive company, bringing promises of FNAF Funko Pops, plushies, figurines, and more. However, I'm sure you already know that everyone who was excited that these possibilities would quickly find themselves rather disappointed. I'm going to primarily be talking about the plushies and action figures to keep this video from being too long. If anyone is interested in hearing about the other absurd Funko FNAF products, I'm more than happy to continue talking about this in a separate video. But these two are probably the best examples in terms of Funko's inconsistent qualities of merch. Starting with the plushies, let's take a look at the original five. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Mangle, I guess? These first products were heavily based on the in-game plushie designs, which is why they look so similar to other early plushies. These first five plushies are probably as good as it's going to get in terms of quality. They're the closest to their official in-game counterparts, with the exception of Chica. I have no idea what happened here. The best out of these four is absolutely Foxy. He's probably the best Funko plushie out there. In terms of quality though, these still aren't the best, but they were only the first few plushies that we would get, so surely the quality could only improve- <laughs> Yeah, Funko plushies suck. There are a small few of these plushies that I actually think look pretty good, some that are downright hideous, and some that are so ugly they're lovable and charming. These plushies are typically inaccurate, made with poor quality, and have some strange design choices. Some of the most infamous of these ugly design choices include these printed on withering textures, as well as the neck mouth things. Yeah, I don't know, these just look incredibly goofy. Funko plushies are the most popular in terms of recognition. If you search up a character in plush, you're likely to see these guys before anything else. This is why a lot of bootleggers tend to take Funko plushies and make their own versions based off of the designs. In most cases, these are even worse than the originals, but can also be pretty similar in quality or even better. Despite how hideous so many of these plushies look, I'm rather fond of them. And I'm glad they exist. Sure, I'd prefer better ones, but some of these ugly plushies are just too charming to pass up. One of my personal favorites is this Springtrap. Not only because he's the best character, but also because he just looks so fucking goofy. This is the main villain of most of the franchise, and here he's depicted with a fat snout and a stupid grin. I love this little guy. If you're as angry about the design choices in these Funko plushies as I am, I strongly recommend checking out Bizibizow's Fixing FNAF plushies series. Although, if you're watching this, you likely already have. Moving on to the figurines, these are also insanely infamous. The actual quality of these aren't too bad. They're pretty flimsy, sure, and their joints break apart incredibly easy when posing them, but some of these are actually really accurate and well-made. Others, not so much. These definitely have a better track record than the plushies, but some of them are still pretty bad. The best example of this is probably the Security Breach line. Now, it's important to note that these were probably created before the official models were finalized, so that could likely explain their lack of attention to detail. But there was still plenty of official art available for them at this time, which depicted the characters much better, so... Yeah. These guys look absolutely inaccurate and just dorky. So much, I'd be convinced that they're bootlegs. The head shapes are incredibly inaccurate, and there are so many details left out it's kind of scary. Considering this is the same company behind these, I don't think it's very unfair to have slightly higher expectations. 
A YouTuber known as Weirdo Speed has actually taken to redesigning these guys, and they look a lot better. I'll leave a link to these in the info card at the top right, so you should definitely go check it out if you're interested. Seriously, it's so much easier to see the inconsistency and general bad quality of the originals compared to these. Seriously talented people in this fandom, goddamn. What Funko is probably most infamous for, however, are their insane amounts of recolors and original characters. Some of these are actually kind of cute, and others are just... well... yeah. The best examples of these are the tie-dye and blacklight series. I don't have too much of a problem with these blacklight ones, some of them are kind of cute, but the fact that they can pump out all of these and not even make a single decent spring trap makes me very upset. Funko is also just known for being kind of scummy when it comes to the FNAF franchise. I'm sure a lot of people remember the day they literally leaked the security breach designs and names, something that Scott was incredibly upset about, especially considering the fact that he probably had a really cool and fun way of introducing these characters to us planned already. For a while, Funko wasn't allowed to produce anything related to the franchise because of this. However, in more recent times, they're still pumping these out. One final thing I'd like to talk about in regards to Funko are these character statues. These are actually some of the best official FNAF merch we've ever gotten. These statues are a big reason why people are so disappointed with Funko's usual bad quality, as they are more than capable of creating something high quality and genuinely really damn sick. Funko still releases new statues from time to time, and I'm in full support of these but it still sucks that these are just a few diamonds in the rough of inconsistency, poor quality, and cheese traps. Funko is definitely leaning towards the worser end on our scale here, but it's not absolute bottom of the barrel. We'll get there, though. On a lighter note, let's take a look at the earliest FNAF merch. Sanchi is a name you've likely heard before if you're familiar with FNAF merch. These guys are responsible for the first ever official FNAF merch, and are known primarily for their good quality, attention to detail, and fast shipping. There are a few collectibles such as pins and a poster, but they're most known for their plushies, as they're extremely high quality, accurate to the games, and just look fucking adorable. The original five plushies include Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. Chica comes with a cupcake that you can move on and off her hand, using a magnet. To no one's surprise, Sanchi will be going towards the top of our scale. The only reason it's not at the absolute highest is because their catalog is very limited, and these plushies are commonly sold out. If you're unfamiliar with Theorywear, this is the merch and clothing company by MatPat. They have a section in collaboration with FNAF, and I wanted to talk about it because these products are very hit or miss. Some of this stuff is really high quality and awesome, like these shirt designs and jackets. And others are this overpriced blanket. I think the main issue I have with these are the pricing. Most of these products are really high quality, though. I have the security breach jacket, and while the texture isn't my personal favorite, it's still good material and quality, and looks pretty sick. I can, like, only associate it with Daco, however. <laughs> we'll put Theorywear fairly above the middle on our scale. The quality is pretty good, but some of these items are just not it. This name probably triggered a fight or flight in some of you, myself included. If you're not familiar with Just Toys, these are the people behind... <sighs> the backpack hangers. They're most known for their blind bags and this really ugly style of fat heads and tiny bodies. God, I remember seeing these guys everywhere in my local Target a while back. They still are in most places with these security breach blind bags. And these are about as high quality as they look. Little to no detail, poor paint jobs, false advertising? The actual figures are not as they appear to be on the packaging. I think my favorite thing from Just Toys is this little Vanny plush keychain, as it's probably the only good-looking thing I can find from them. But it's not even available to buy, so... These guys are also behind the Five Nights at Freddy's branded slime. Which, I mean, come on, why does this exist? There's absolutely no reason to have this as official merchandise other than squeezing money out of children. I've never purchased one of these, but I'm certain that just taking that Fazgoo out of its containment is probably considered some kind of chemical warfare. Seriously, I can smell the fucking thing through the screen. Yeah, to no one's surprise, Just Toys is a little bit below Funko. Not quite at the bottom, however, as that title belongs to the one and only... Holy fuck hell, how do I even start this section? I wholeheartedly believe that Bioworld is responsible for some of the worst FNAF merch in existence. Ugly coloring, inconsistent design, some of the worst graphic design I have ever seen in my life. I could design a better t-shirt than this in five f***ing minutes. Jesus Christ, I'm not even gonna pretend to be a professional artist, but I know enough about color theory to know that this would burn any sane person's eyes out. I remember seeing kids wearing this shit when I was in middle school, and I think I unknowingly put them on a mental blacklist. 
What the f*** is this? If I ever see a child wearing this again, I think I might kick them into the sun. I am genuinely flabbergasted that these are official pieces of FNAF merch. Who is wearing this? Yeah, this one's going at the bottom. Not to be confused with the creator of Family Guy, McFarlane is a toy company founded by Todd McFarlane, who's known for a good amount of other stuff. In 2016, they released their first Five Nights at Freddy's 8-bit minifigures and construction sets. The 8-bit figurines are super cute, quick LEGO-style builds based on the 8-bit sprites from the classic FNAF Atari minigames. These are adorable, great collector's items, but there's not too much to talk about here. However, the construction sets are probably the most well-known things to come from McFarlane. I've never been able to get my hands on one of these, but for the most part, I've heard good things. Some details are misprinted or forgotten, but in general, these figurines are really detailed and well-made. One of my favorite parts of these figurines is the inclusion of their endoskeletons. I mean, seriously, the detail on these little guys is crazy. I also absolutely adore the builds in their atmosphere. The texturing on the walls, these adorable sticker posters, it just all looks so good. I think the general consensus among the community is that these sets are great, and I agree. Putting McFarlane on the higher end, as well there are a good few instances of misprints and inconsistencies, Overall, the quality of these are great. YouTube started off as a company specializing in vinyl figurines for YouTubers, and has more recently branded off into making merchandise for more popular IPs such as South Park, TMNT, SpongeBob, Chainsaw Man, and of course, FNAF. In 2021, YouTube's released their first four official FNAF figurines, featuring Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy. Since then, YouTube's has released FNAF plushies, more figurines, posters, pins, accessories, anything really. I only have one YouTube's FNAF plushie as of now, but I have three more coming in soon, as well as this silly little guy. Make sure to keep my videos on loop to watch all of the ads, as well as giving me super thanks in chats, so I can use all of the money that Google gives me on these silly billies. As far as quality goes, I love these a lot. Every YouTube's figurine and plushie I've purchased are adorable and really well made, and these designs are so charming. Here are some of my favorites. YouTube's is definitely higher up on the scale, but not all the way up, as some people have reported misprints, shipping problems, all that jazz. And either way, the place at the top of our scale rightfully belongs to... These plushies are the sole reason I wanted to make this video. Started by Lewis Dawkins, more commonly known as Daco, and Hero Shark, Hex is a comic series with some of the most adorable character designs I've seen in recent times. Their website features plushies of these characters, as well as collaborative plushies of FNAF characters, and these guys are top tier, as good as it gets really. I love the aesthetic of the button eyes and stitches, but the thing that really makes these plushies so damn unique is the creative use of magnets. The parts and service gimmick allows for these plushies to be brutally torn apart and murdered, and then put back together again! These magnets also allow for unique posing, as you can move each of their limbs very animatronic-like. This is probably my favorite gimmick of any FNAF merch ever, but if you're looking for more snuggly, soft friends, the non-pull-apart cuddly plushies have the same aesthetic and looks, and are more suitable for loving. A lot of the magnet plushies are real expensive, however, but it's completely understandable considering their quality and detail. The footage I'm showing is of my toy Bonnie, and I love him very dearly. I really need these little fellas, so I'm begging they come back in stock eventually. Please, I love you, Spring Bonnie. Hex absolutely deserves the top spot here, and I am confident in that decision. I'll leave a link to these products in the description, because if you have the money and are looking for good quality FNAF plushies and collectibles, there's no line of merchandise I'd recommend more. And there we have it, our complete FNAF merch scale. There are a few other companies and one-off products that deserve to be briefly talked about, however. For instance, this Freddy Fazbear pillow pet. Aside from having the goofiest, most iconic looking design, this guy is extremely high quality and soft. I sleep with him almost every night. There's also the infamous, ridiculously ugly good stuff plushies, the most popular of which likely being this baby. What the hell even happened here? Why is Glamrock Ready brown? Good stuff is also responsible for these things. Yeah, I, I don't know what they were going for here. Hot Topic, despite usually coming out with pretty ugly t-shirt designs, has been releasing some really cool stuff lately. I really love these spring trap designs by Turntail, as well as the security button up. They also have these soda earrings, which are quite stylish, and this adorable Glamrock Freddy backpack. He doesn't have much space in him, but I love wearing him and bringing him around. He's also just a really good quality plush in general. His design being simple, but still accurate. His mouth is also super cool, as it's not printed on like most plushies seem to be. All in all, I'm excited for the future of FNAF merch, especially with more recent companies like U2's and Hex frequently coming up with new stuff. 
I'm especially excited for the next few Hex plushies, including Weathered Characters, Mangle, and The Puppet, which all look fantastic so far. It's also pretty likely we'll be getting new FNAF merch for the movie, and I'm looking forward to it. The future of FNAF and its merchandise is bright. While doing research for this video, I found some absolutely hilarious FNAF bootlegs, so if anybody wants a video on that, I'd be more than happy to make one. Holy hell though, there are over 3,000 of you! When I started this script, there wasn't even 2,000! I'd honestly love to do things like giveaways and live streams if that number continues to grow. I have a good handful of video ideas, but as always, I would love to hear what you guys think I should discuss. You'll also probably notice that I am showing fan art here. Yes, thank you so much to all of these amazing artists. Please make sure to check them out, and if you want to send in any fan art to be featured in the end here, you can tag me in your post on Twitter or Instagram, or just email me the art in your preferred social platform for me to credit. Thank you all so much, until next time, I've been Quinnamon, and this balloon has been staring at me throughout this entire recording and I'm starting to feel a little bit scared. Bye!